Hey guys, what's up? It's Monkazonki, and welcome to my new updated fight cave guide. So the mages in the fight caves have been buffed. They now hit quite a bit harder than they used to be, which has been causing people some trouble. And I've had a lot of requests to redo my fight caves guide, so that's what I'm going to be doing. And the main thing that I'll be focusing on in this video is showing you guys several different gear setups because I didn't go over that too well in the last guide. And also, I'll be telling you guys how to deal with the mages and take a lot less damage from them using stuff that's not terribly high requirements, some abilities that you should be able to get um, pretty easily and some gear that shouldn't take you too long to get and it's going to help you a ton out in the fight caves. So the first thing we're going to be going over is the gear setup. Now there's some things that can help you out a lot in the fight caves that aren't very difficult to get. First of all is the Taco Zo. You can get this by completing the Elder Kiln quest which will also unlock the fight kiln which is a main reason a lot of people do the fight caves is because you need a fire cape before you can access the fight kiln and this ring will grant you 10% bonus damage however it will use up charges while you are inside the fight caves but if you're really struggling with fight caves and not quite able to take out those creatures as fast as you want to be able to this ring will provide some bonus damage and that'll really help also if you complete the next quest in the quest series line the brink of extinction and then complete the fight cauldron minigame which I will have a link on the screen for a video of me showing off how to do that. Um, it only takes about half an hour to get this obsidian armor. The quest is kind of a pain to do, but the quest isn't very long. It does have some high requirements, like um, I believe 80 smithing and such, but if you can meet the requirements for this obsidian armor, it's very worth it because it will reduce the damage you take inside the fight caves quite significantly, about 55% damage reduction when you have the entire set um, and that'll really help you out a lot you'll take a lot less damage also if you wear a ranger helm while you're ranging or even any of the other helms when you're doing a different combat style but I would recommend the ranger helm because the monsters that you're gonna have the most problems with the, in the fight caves are the mages and if you have this helm it's going to increase your accuracy by 10% which is going to be really handy for hitting the monsters that aren't magic based since you won't have great magic against them also the mages are the highest level monsters so they have the highest defense in the fight cave so that's really why it's best to use range here since if you use melee or mage and you don't have tier 90 weapons you're going to have problems with accuracy against the mages if for some reason you don't want to do quests or if you don't have the requirements and you still want to do this activity um, another set of armor that you can wear is superior your death lotus and this can be got from player imports or you can alternatively buy death lotus off the grand exchange and it will degrade to dust over time but it has nearly as good defense um, this does require 85 defense and 85 hp to wear however so it does have some fairly high requirements and also you can get the superior leviathan ring from player imports if you have it again it takes a long time to get but you can buy one off the grand exchange as well and this one will have a five percent chance to reduce 50 percent of the damage that you take or if the one that you buy off the GE has a 2% chance and also has some pretty decent armor and uh, strength bonuses. Another thing that's very important for the fight caves is if you have access to Curadel and you're planning on doing some Slayer anyway, I would kind of recommend to wait until you get a Slayer task from Curadel to do the fight caves and then you can accept the Jadcat task. Not only will this make the fight caves a lot more worth it because you'll get a lot more Slayer XP, but also you'll be able to get the bonus of the Slayer Helm there so you'll get 14% extra accuracy and damage within the fight caves and this also stacks if you have the Obsidian Ring. Um, so I'd highly recommend bringing that and you can also wear the full Obsidian Armor and the Obsidian Helm will give you the same bonus as a Slayer Helm while on task within the fight cave. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, if you're really not doing great in a money situation, you know, level 75 or even 80 Royal Weapon, for example, the Royal Crossbow of your level 80 range, or you can even work with a hand cannon at level 75 range. Um, this will do the trick. It will definitely make the fight caves a lot more difficult because it will be harder to hit the monsters. But if you are on task and you're wearing your Slayer Helm, it will make the Royal Crossbow nearly as good as a level 90 weapon because you'll have a big accuracy and damage boost there. Also, if you can't afford or just don't meet the requirements for some higher level armor, you can wear a War Priest, or you could even wear Royal Dragonhide if you want to be really cheap. The final two equipment items I would recommend is a Sign of Life. You can just buy these off the GE, and this is a one-time mess-up free chance on Jad. For example, if Jad KOs you, the Sign of Life will restore you about 2k HP, and then you have another chance. Hopefully, you won't be messing up on Jad and you won't need it, but it's just more of a safeguard than anything else. Also, I'd recommend to bring a Vampirism Aura. Um, the Vampirism Aura is around 20k loyalty points, I believe. And this is a very important thing to buy. Even if you have Soul Split already unlocked, um, the Vampirism Aura is just really nice in many, many situations in PVM. You should be getting it anyway. So if you have the Vampirism Aura, make sure you're using that during the fight caves. And this will heal you 2.5% of the damage that you do on any attack. And it really adds up over time and you'll be healing back a lot of HP. So you will have to use a lot less food. So the final thing we're going to be going over before we start the fight cave 
Caves is the inventory setup and the abilities. So I not I know not everyone going for their first fight gate will have overloads, but if you do have them, make sure to bring two flasks and two renewals, and that will last you the entire fight caves. You can stay overloaded the entire time. If you don't have overloads, bring super ranging flasks and also bring the prayer renewal flask because that will help a lot. You can also bring a chaotic kite shield if you do not have the Guthix's blessing ability unlocked. If you do have the Guthix's blessing ability unlocked, don't worry about the shield because you won't be using any defensive abilities that you can't use without a shield. But if you don't have that ability unlocked, you'll be using the Rejuvenate ability, and this will restore 40% of your HP. Um, I, I believe it's a 5-minute cooldown, and it's an ultimate ability, so it'll use your entire adrenaline bar. But this will really help you for healing a lot during the fight caves. Um, will save you a lot of food if you just bring that shield along with you. I also brought some brews. These restore 4,000 HP per brew, so they restore more health than Rocktails. Um, again, they're a bit more tricky to use if you don't have overloads. If you don't have overloads, replace the prayer potions with super restores because the brews will lower your stats, so you will need the re super restores to boost them. However, if you have overloads, it doesn't matter. You can just bring the overloads with the brews because the overloads will automatically boost your stats and the rest i have is rock tails if you have um, below 95 hp replace these with sharks because sharks will heal you more and then finally i have prayer potions or super restores work just fine so for the ability bar setup i'd recommend just copying mine i use revolution for the 5ks i'd recommend that you do too also make sure that you have your food on your ability bar just in case things get hairy and also have your prayers you want protect from range and protect from mage you won't be using this until jad but you want to make sure that they're out there for when jad comes so you can be ready also you want to have your defensive ability book out now the two abilities that are going to help the most against the mages are first of all the ability debilitate what debilitate does is when you use it against an enemy any damage that enemy gives unto you is reduced by 50 percent for eight seconds so if you can kill um, that level 360 mage within like 10 seconds his damage is going to be reduced by 50 percent most of that time so that's really nice you'll take a lot less damage from the mages also you'll be praying mage which reduces their damage by 50 percent so overall it's reducing their damage an additional 50 percent so you're only taking like 25 percent damage from them which is pretty nice also the devotion ability is very good here it makes your protection prayers 100 percent effective for 10 seconds so this is really nice especially later on when you come to the double mage wave and you can just pray mage use devotion and then kill the mages very quickly if you don't have devotion unlocked already you can unlock this ability by either killing bandos or armadil i found it takes about three to four hours to get devotion um it will just appear on your spell book uh on your defensive ability spell book that is when you actually get the drop so um you just kill bandos or kill armadil either one doesn't really matter um until you get the devotion ability if you really just want devotion and you're really struggling with the fight caves you can use this pretty much every other wave in the fight caves um and take pretty much no damage from the mages so it's extremely handy so if you're really struggling with the fight caves and you need some help desperately against those mages i'd recommend just going to bandos for a few hours and eventually you will get devotion and it will help you out a lot so that's about all for the setup and inventory let's get into the fight caves i'll be speeding through most of it i will slow down the caves um, once we get to the first start of the mages and also once we get to jad and i'll kind of explain what to do the rest of the fight caves are very very straightforward however if you're a low level um, and you take a lot of damage from most of the monsters i will show you guys a safe spot where you can hide and then the monsters will be lured to you one by one and you can fight them individually and save a lot of food however i wouldn't recommend doing this unless you're really struggling with not taking damage because it does slow down the fight caves a lot and it's going to make them take at least 15 minutes longer than they normally do but anyway we're going to the fight caves now so good luck us so when you first enter the fight caves for the first 30 waves there's not really a whole lot to worry about if you are a decent level and have at least i would say ports armor um or better obviously with the obsidian armor you will have absolutely nothing to worry about especially if you have soul split I personally didn't use Soul Split at all during this fight caves, but I did activate my vampires more. Actually, I think I used Soul Split for maybe one wave. I tried not to use Soul Split though, because I know a lot of people wouldn't have it. And believe me, I would have been completely fine without Soul Split. And the main reason for that is just this obsidian armor with its huge damage reduction is very, very helpful, which is why I'd highly recommend picking it up so much because it's very good yes it does require a grandmaster quest to make it 
but it doesn't have terribly high requirements other than I guess the 80 smithing. So as you just saw when I went into that little corner there, um, that is the safe spot that you want to be using if you are a low level. For example, if you're around 70 or below defense, you want to be hiding in that little corner and you can stay there and all the monster waves will just come to you. So you don't have to fight multiple monsters at one time. You can just fight them one at a time. So you're not getting damaged by more than one at a time. And then you want to be using your shield in the rejuvenate ability or if you have guts is blessing use that um, for most of your healing like use that every single time it's available to heal up because you want to be conserving your food um, again if you have really low um, HP and you're taking a lot of damage it might be wise to bring some more brews and less rock tails because the rock tails heal more for what for one bite but the brews heal more HP overall um, so this fight cave will be sped up until wave 31 and there's not really a whole lot um, that you need to look out for in these initial few waves you want to take out the Rangers first I didn't always do a great job of this i tried to for the most part but the rangers do a lot more damage than the um little bat things the prayer suckers and the guys that split into two melee monsters those ones really don't do very much damage at all so just focus down the rangers first also there will be some mailers that are that can come out again if you're standing in the safe spot the mailers will be trapped fairly easily and you won't really have to worry about them you can also just have the mailers stand behind other creatures um, of course if you are having troubles with taking damage you want to be praying melee here we'll start out the way of praying range take out the ranger and then switch to pray melee and take out the melee rangers aren't up quite yet but the rangers will be coming soon as soon as you see um two of the little melee split into two guys in one wave along with a melee -er. so yeah the melee -ers can do a decent amount of damage but they're really really easy to trap because they're so big so you can just walk behind um in front of the other monsters and the melee -ers will get trapped in front of or behind the other monsters so they're not very difficult to deal with i'd say the rangers are more the ones that you got to look out for if you're a lower level um although you will be using range armor so the melee -ers can tear through the range armor fairly easily because you know melee counters range so here's the first wave um where you start to deal with wave 22 is when you start to deal with um rangers and meleers at the same time it shouldn't be that difficult to take out again just remember take out the ranger first trap the meleer take him out second prayer switch if you need to um again if you're like overloading and stuff to throughout this entire fight cave and i didn't choose to do this but you can also bring like the penance aura and choose to use turmoil or the range version of turmoil which is anguish throughout the entire fight cave if you want or piety or rigor if you want off of the regular um prayer book and that will increase your defense and your offense and all but you kind of need penance to do that um unless you can do the fight caves really fast um because otherwise you'll run out of prayer and as you see there i brought out my defensive ability spellbook and that is because uh you know you guys know what's coming up pretty soon it's the majors they come out on wave 31 and once you get to wave 31 you always want to start out every single wave with praying against magic but that's not too difficult to do um you'll see two rangers and a melee -er, and then the next wave will have two melee -ers, which shouldn't be that hard to take out just pray melee if you're struggling here but after this wave is over you want to make sure pray mage is on and you want to keep this on for the rest of the fight caves at least until all majors are dead in one wave so here comes the major um i don't do it and i will do this later on in the fight cave i didn't do this for the first couple majors but you will want to pray devotion here um or if devotion is on cooldown and there's a mage still alive you want to debilitate him and i went over those abilities um, earlier on in the guide so you should know what those are again devotion is not that hard to get just requires a couple hours of doing bandos bandos is a fairly easy boss if you have the stats to do a fight cave successfully you should also have the stats to kill bandos at least duo or so just make sure if you are duoing bandos or something like that that you are getting those kills so you can unlock devotion um, but the majors shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as you debilitate them or use devotion against them also if you stand uh, really close to them they will use melee against you as well so just keep that in mind um, but anyway i will be speeding up most of the rest of the fight cave i hope that you guys can understand how to deal with the majors they're not terribly difficult you do want to use your thresholds against them so try not to use your thresholds such as rapid fire and snapshot too much against the rest of the monsters because you want to make sure that those abilities, the high damage dealing abilities, are off of cooldown. 
when you actually fight the majors and i wouldn't recommend using ultimates because you want to have some adrenaline available so that you can use debilitate and i show off using debilitate here and his reduces his damage quite significantly um but yeah you want to make sure that you have adrenaline available to use debilitate and devotion so try not to use ultimate abilities um at all unless there's a whole bunch of monsters left on the wave after you kill the major and you can get your adrenaline back up but you don't want to be on a wave when a major spawns especially if you're low defense and you don't have enough adrenaline to use debilitate or devotion so here i show off using devotion you just click that with prey mage active and the major cannot touch you for 10 seconds so that's really really handy will save you a ton of food um, you can only use devotion about once every other wave depending on how quickly you're doing the waves because it has a fairly long cooldown um, but it's definitely worth using so make sure you pick that one up if you can and you'll be using a lot in future pvm situations as well so the sooner you get it the better um, and here i finally use guthix's blessing i think that was the first healing i used all fight cave um, so that just goes to show like how powerful this obsidian armor really is and just how much easier it makes the fight caves um, but anyway we're going to be speeding up until wave 62 here which is going to be the double major wave so yeah the rest of the fight caves will be like super sped up because um they're not terribly engaging you know it's mostly just more of the same that you've been doing the entire fight cave um it does become a little bit tricky when you have rangers meleers and ma and majors all out in one wave um, but again, it's not that difficult to trap the mailers and you just want to make sure your priority is you kill the major first, you kill the ranger second, and you kill the melee third because that's um, what it's going to be in terms of how much damage that they can do to you. Um, so after this wave, we're finally going to have mailers out. And of course, if you need to, you can also always prayer switch away from pray for mage after the major is dead. Just make sure the major is dead before you switch off pray mage. And then uh, make sure you remember to turn on pray mage again at the end of the wave. If you have soul split unlocked and um, you don't have the obsidian armor and you're taking some damage, as soon as the major is dead, you can turn on soul split. Um, you don't want to soul split the major, though. They will deal a lot of damage to you. But alternatively, if you don't have soul split unlocked the second the major is dead, just turn on pray for range. Second the ranger is dead, turn on pray for melee. Shouldn't take a whole lot of damage. Um, anyway, we will be seeing like all three of those high damage dealing monsters out um, pretty soon here. You should be fine on supplies. Again, like I used barely any prayer. I'm not really sure what kept my prayer so high um, because I only used, I think, one prayer pot the entire fight cave and I had pray mage active. I didn't turn it off at all um, between waves 31 and up all the way until when I defeated Jad. So again, I'm not really sure what kept my prayer active for that long. It might just be the prayer renewal and the fact that I wasn't using any other prayers other than Pray Mage. Um, so with the amount of prayer pots that I took, you could definitely use Turmoil or um, you know Piety or one of those damage and accuracy boosting prayers if you were, really would like. Just keep in mind that if you're going to bring enough prayer poets prayer potions to do that you might run a little bit low on food um, but anyway we're going to be you know finishing off these waves pretty soon this is the main grind of the fight caves all the major waves because there's going to be a lot of monsters spawning at once it's quite boring but i mean hey if you're on a slayer task or something which i would recommend to be um, from curadel you'll be getting a decent amount of slayer xp and it's decent combat xp it's not really the best combat xp in the world and it's nothing to get too excited about but it is decent and now we switch into the duo major waves so the second the wave starts make sure you pray devotion because you'll have two of them shooting at you at once so you'll be taking a lot of damage if you don't have devotion up and then just use rapid fire and uh, use snapshot against that first major you want him down as quickly as possible and then you want to debilitate the second major and you shouldn't take uh, too much damage from them and now you guys remember that safe spot that i showed you very early on in the fight cave that's where we're going to be going before the jad spawn so jad can spawn right next to you in the safe spot but the good thing is if he does spawn right next to you you can easily see his attacks as you can see here he actually did spawn right next to me however this isn't super common so um, it's pretty likely that jad will not spawn right next to you he'll spawn somewhere else in the fight cave and then he'll walk over toward you and you have time to prepare and i don't know calm your nerves and stuff like that um, but if he does spawn right next to you just prepared be prepared that he can do this except he won't do it all that often um, so you just want to have um, either prey mage or prey range active and just be ready to switch to the opposite prayer if he manages to use that one so the attack where he kind of stands up on his hind legs that's the mage attack and the attack where he kind of slaps the ground with his um, front paws 
that is his range attack and at about half hp the healers will come out um i only got three of them but i believe there's four probably one of the healers got trapped or something like that you just want to keep it calm make sure that you're making prayer switching your priority here again i have obsidian armor and you will see me get hit once i only got hit at about three thousand but if you're not wearing obsidian armor jad can hit up to like six seven thousand so if you're not 99 hp jad can ko you um so just be aware of that but again, just make sure you're focusing on the prayer switching. Um, take your time with the healers. As long as you have plenty of supplies left, you should be able to easily win this fight. The healers don't hit that hard. Um, so just make sure you're prayer switching first. And once you're absolutely sure that you have the correct prayer against what Jad is attacking, then you focus on taking down the healers. So um, hopefully with luck and with skill and with practice, I suppose, you'll get your fire cape and congratulations. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed and farewell.